It is my honor to present to you the Governor of the Great State of Louisiana, Honorable Bobby Jindal. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, statewide elected officials, members of the House, members of the Senate, family, friends, fellow Louisianians, thank you very much for that warm reception. Thank you for coming to Baton Rouge today to start yet another session where we come here to do the people's work. It's hard to believe that it was just six years ago we started working together. At that time, we had a Louisiana where our sons and daughters were leaving the state to pursue their dreams elsewhere. We had a state where we were lagging the country when it came to economic growth. And I want to thank the men and women of the House and the Senate of this legislature for your hard work. I want to thank you for tackling ethics reforms as one of the first priorities, as your first priority so that we move from the bottom to the top of those good lists. I want to thank you for coming back and getting rid of taxes on debt, on new equipment, on utilities, passing the state's largest ever income tax cut in our state's history. I want to thank you for following that up by coming back and working on workforce training. So now that we've got the top-rated workforce training program in the entire country, I want to thank you for passing historic education reforms. So now we have one of the largest school choice initiatives in the entire country. We've got a record number of our kids graduating from high school. We have dramatically fewer failing schools in our state. I want to thank you for your hard work transforming our health care system through Bayou Health, public-private health care partnerships. You have saved the taxpayers of Louisiana hundreds of millions of dollars, but even more importantly, you have dramatically improved the quality of health care for our people. And there are so many other initiatives and reforms. I want to thank you for your hard work. What are the results of these laws, these reforms, these policy changes? Well, the result is our economy has grown 50 percent faster than the national economy these last six years. The result is here in Louisiana, we've now announced over $50 billion in economic development projects, over 80,000 new jobs coming into our state. The result is in Louisiana, we broke records not once but multiple times last year for the number of, number of people working in Louisiana. Our per capita income ranking is now the highest that it's been in 80 years. The result is in Louisiana, we have more people here working than ever before. We've got more people living here than ever before, earning a higher income than ever before. And that bears repeating. We've got more people working in Louisiana than ever before, more people living here before earning a higher income after 25 years of losing our sons and daughters. For the last six years, we've had more people move into Louisiana rather than leave our state. Now, I'd love to spend all day just citing statistics and numbers and facts about how well Louisiana has done thanks to your hard work, but I, instead of doing that, I'd like to share some stories. I'd like to actually share with you some examples of real-life people who have benefited from your work and from your reforms. Sons and daughters of Louisiana who are doing well in our state thanks to what you've done to create a new Louisiana. A native of Winfield, Matt Purser left Louisiana in 19, 1998 to pursue a job opportunity in Dallas, Texas. Over time, Matt wanted to return to his home state to be part of a community like the one where he grew up, but only if a job opportunity were available. And that's when he heard about Crest Industries. A leader in the electrical transmission and distribution sector, Crest Industries has experienced solid growth from its headquarters in Pineville. Matt applied with Crest, and he returned home to Louisiana last year. Not only is he back with family and friends in our great state, but he's enjoying his career with a Louisiana-based company poised for more growth. As Crest Industries' mobile executive, he hit the ground running, contributing to both of their latest announcements and investments. They announced a 70-job galvanizing plant in Tangibahoa Parish and a new expansion at their Pineville headquarters, which will create another 90 new direct jobs. We are thrilled to have Matt home. Matt is here. I'm going to ask Matt to stand. Let's give Matt a great round of applause for returning home to Louisiana. There's also a Maurice, Louisiana native, Jason Picard. He has more than 25 years of experience in the aviation industry. Eight of those have been with Bell Helicopter in Lafayette. Since 2006, he worked at their component and services facility in the Lafayette area, even though this provided steady employment. He couldn't help but wonder if there were better opportunities out of state. As an avid hunter and fisher, Jason hated the idea of parting with his Louisiana home, 
especially if it meant being away from the food, the culture, most importantly, his friends and family. But he was looking for new opportunities for his career, no matter the zip code. Last December, we announced that Bell Helicopter is going to build its new helicopters, the Bell 505 Jet Ranger X, at a new helicopter assembly facility at the Lafayette Regional Airport, creating 115 new direct jobs. As a customer sales and support account manager for Bell and Lafayette, Jason now has new opportunities with Bell right here at home. He doesn't have to leave Louisiana to pursue his dreams. Jason's here with us as well. Jason, please stand up. Let's congratulate Jason on his ability to find his career right here in Louisiana. Laura Miller is a native of San Jose, California. Having completed a tour of duty as a soldier in the United States Army and now a member of the Army Reserves, Laura was recruited by Danos to serve as project manager for several special projects. Today she's made the construction of their new headquarters which we announced in May of 2013 that will create 325 new jobs. With her friendly neighbors and a low cost of living, Laura is particularly impressed with the optimism she finds in Louisiana. She's come to discover that in Louisiana, if you work hard, you apply yourself, you can find a great job. And I might add, she says, finding a job, especially the one that pays well, is much easier here than in California. With her new life in Louisiana, she's able to afford her own home. She's enrolled in the MBA program at Tulane, which Danos is contributing towards. And she's pursuing her dreams right here in our great state. Laura, I want to thank you for your service to our country in uniform. I want to welcome you to Louisiana. Laura is here with us. Please stand. Let's recognize and congratulate and thank Laura for her service. With more than 20 years of experience in the pulp and paper industry, Art Boyle was looking to make a career change into the renewable energy sector. When Drax Biomass announced the creation of a $120 million wood pellet facility in Bastrop, Art was hired on to be the plant manager. In August of 2013, with his wife and four sons, Art left Oklahoma for a new opportunity in Louisiana. Art says he can't imagine a better place to pursue his career, especially given the incredible potential from northeast Louisiana. The abundance of timber and other natural resources in the area provide an ideal environment for the success of the Drax Biomass Facility. As the facility prepares to come online, Art's helping to organize a job recruitment fair in the coming months to pull from the talented workforce in the area to fill even more great jobs. Art is here with us today. Art, please stand and welcome to the great state of Louisiana. Let's congratulate Art. <laughs> Highly skilled in technology, Randall Franklin has worked at CSC, a leading Fortune 500 technology company for almost 10 years in Texas. A few weeks ago, we announced that CSC will establish a new technology center at Bossier City's National Cyber Research Park. The company is going to employ 800 people in cloud computing, cybersecurity, big data, and application modernization. One of those people is going to be Randall. As hiring manager, he is accepting applications from highly skilled, talented people who may soon be his colleagues. He's been a lifelong resident of Texas. But now, Randall and his family have moved to Bossier City to start a new chapter as Louisiana residents. Randall is here. Randall, if you please stand. Randall, welcome to Louisiana. We wish you the best on your success with CSC. A New Orleans native and U.S. Marine Corps veteran, Earl Burrow serves as the material supervisor for MECO, his employer, for the past 25 years. Earl was a longtime resident of St. Bernard Parish, but because his home was destroyed by the hurricane, he and his family relocated to Texas. Earl was fortunate to stay with Miko, and he worked with Miko facilities in both Stafford and Sugarland, Texas. Miko founded in New Orleans 70 years ago and, true to its Louisiana roots, committed in 2012 to create 127 new jobs in Mandeville, along with new fabrication and office facilities. I'm proud to announce that just three weeks ago, Earl and his family sold their home in Katy, Texas and they closed on a new house in Hammond, and they'll make their official move back to Louisiana next month. Earl is here. Earl, if you'd please stand. We're honored to have you back. Thank you also for your service to our country. In August 2013, AAR Corporation announced a 750-job aircraft maintenance, repair, and overhaul operation at Chenault International Airport in Lake Charles. At AAR's Indianapolis facility, avionics leader Robert Corbello expressed to his employers he would be an ideal candidate 
for a transfer to their new facility in Lake Charles. As a 1987 graduate of South Cameron High School in Creole, Louisiana, he was eager to leave the snowy winters of Indiana and return to his hometown of Lake Charles. In October 2013, he did just that as AAR Corporation's avionics lead for the Chenault location. Thanks to AAR's investment in the state, he can now enjoy a stable career that supports his wife, Roxanne, and their young daughter, surrounded by his extended family in his hometown. Robert's here. Robert, if you'd please stand. Welcome home. We're glad to have you back in the great state of Louisiana. Jordan, San Diego, New York, Tokyo, North Carolina, and Baton Rouge. All of these are places that Dima Gawi, the manager of talent development for the new IBM Technology Center in Baton Rouge, has called home. After IBM announced their new 800-job technology center in downtown Baton Rouge in March 2013, Dima proudly joined the team in August and helped with the company's startup and logistical matters. Having traveled all around the world with IBM for several assignments, Dima says Baton Rouge is a place she most quickly felt at home. Dima is here with us today. Dima, if you'd please stand. Welcome to the great state of Louisiana. These men and women, some from Louisiana, some coming to our state, from Texas, from Oklahoma, from other states, they couldn't have found opportunities. They couldn't have found the path to pursue their dreams in this great state if it hadn't been for your reforms. If you hadn't revamped the ethics code, if you hadn't cut taxes, if you hadn't committed to balancing the budget without raising taxes, if you hadn't reformed education and invested in workforce training, they wouldn't be here. But it's not just about them, it's about thousands of other Louisianians wanting to pursue their dreams in this great state. And so we mustn't become complacent. We're not here just to look back and declare victory. We've got challenges ahead of us. And first and foremost, one of the most important things we can do to make sure that other Louisianians can continue to pursue their dreams right here at home and others can come and move to this great state is to make sure we provide the training. We provide the skilled workers so that businesses can continue to expand. We must educate our children, our people, with the skills they need to thrive in this modern economy. And that's why we propose in our budget to increase overall funding for higher education by over $140 million, with specifically $40 million in the WISE Fund, so we can help to train our students and do the research necessary to continue to grow our economy. And that's why we also want to work with you on Jumpstart to make sure that our students, even in high school, before they get to higher education, have a chance to get the technical training they will need to fill those tens of thousands of new jobs coming to our state. So our first and most important priority must be to make sure we have got the best trained, most skilled, most productive workers you'll find anywhere in the world. It is good that we've cut taxes. It is good that we've got a predictable regulatory environment. But I'm convinced the states and the countries that have the most skilled, most productive workforces are the states and the countries that will do best in this modern economy. The second thing that we look forward to working with you on is that I know many of you have worked with other stakeholders to file bills and work on reforms to make sure that Louisiana has got a predictable and a fair legal environment. We've got to crack down on the frivolous lawsuits just as we cut taxes and ease the regulatory burden just as we've invested in workforce training. We've got to make sure we've got a predictable legal environment, a fair legal environment as the next step to making Louisiana the best place to create good paying jobs and to raise our families. We've got other initiatives we're working with you to serve our veterans, to protect innocent human life, but I want to highlight just a third area, a third priority as we work together this session. Every year that I've been governor, we've worked together to protect the most innocent victims in our state. Those who have been victimized by sex offenders and others. This year, we come to you with an aggressive package to crack down on the awful crime of human trafficking. Now, many of us, when we hear about human trafficking, we think of places all over the world. We think this is a, a horrific crime that happens in other countries. This is a crime that happens in the United States. This is a crime, tragically, that is happening in Louisiana. Too many victims feel like they're voiceless. Too many victims are suffering today in silence. My commitment to you is we will work together to give voice to those victims. We will work together to give relief to those victims. We will work together to sound a loud, loud message that help is on the way. And to those that dare to try to victimize our women and our children, they better not do it in the state of Louisiana.
I'm sure there are other issues we'll work on together. The most important thing is we remain committed to making Louisiana the best state in which to raise a family and find a good paying job. As I close, I want to do something a little unusual for me. I want to tell you a personal story. You know, my parents are here every year that I've given my remarks to you. My parents have come. My in-laws have come. My beautiful wife has come. Maybe next year when I'm giving my last remarks, I might bring the kids as well. But I want to tell you just a story about my parents for a minute as I close. You know, because to me, they're my heroes. Growing up, if you'd asked me, I'd say my parents are my heroes. And many of you heard me talk about my dad in particular, one of nine kids who only got past the fifth grade. But the reason I say my parents are my heroes is that decades ago, my parents came from halfway across the world to find opportunity in this great state. My mom was a student at LSU. My dad came with his pregnant wife. There were no cell phones back then. There was no internet. They didn't know anybody in Louisiana. They had never been to America. But this is what amazes me. They had confidence. They had this conviction. If you could get to Louisiana, if you are willing to work hard, you could create a better quality of life. For your pregnant wife, for your unborn child, for the children that might come later, you could create a better quality of life. You could get here if you're willing to work hard. What I love about their story is they get here not knowing anybody. My dad opens up the yellow pages and starts calling company after company after company looking for a job. I don't know if it took days. I don't know if it took hours. I don't know how long it took. But eventually there was a guy from a railroad company that took a chance and said you could start work on Monday. This is what I love about my dad and I love about this story. Because if you've met him, you know you've seen his enthusiasm, his energy, and his confidence. He tells his new boss, who he's not even met yet, he goes, that's great. He said, now look, I don't have a driver's license, I don't have a car. So he tells his new boss, who he's never met, you're going to have to pick me up on the way to work Monday morning. <laughs> and the guy does. But what I love about their story is that absolute, unshakable, that conviction, that faith, that confidence... If we can get to Louisiana, if we can get to America, if you're willing to work hard, your children can have a better quality of life. They left their family and friends behind, and they have spent their adult lives right here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the reason I ran for office in the first place was I want their grandchildren, I want my children to be able to pursue their dreams right here in this great state. My parents came from halfway across the world. I don't want their grandchildren to have to leave this state to pursue those dreams. I want your children, I want your grandchildren. I want the children, I want the grandchildren of Louisiana to have that same unshakable conviction and confidence that in Louisiana, this is a land of opportunity. If you're willing to get an education, if you're willing to work hard, they should believe like my father did over 40 years ago. If I can make it to Louisiana, if I'm willing to work hard, I can have a great quality of life. I can pursue my dreams. And that's what we're here, that's the whole reason we're starting this session. I look forward to working with you to make sure that every child in Louisiana is able to pursue their dreams, pursue the American dream in this great state. God bless you. God bless the great state of Louisiana. God bless these United States. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President.